Okay, so um, let's move to the end of your book because we want people to read this book and you don't want to give too much away. But you also okay. write, um, you know, you offer a few, I guess not depressing, but almost depressing to read about, uh, doomsday scenarios like a volcano eruption or an asteroid striking the Earth and that could be the end of Earth as we know it. Um, how likely are any of those going to happen, at least in our lifetime? So first of all, those doomsday, doomsday, uh, the doomsday chapter, if you will, how will it all end? Um, you're just talking about Earth in those two examples. <laughs> that chapter keeps going. Okay, when, how will the sun end? How about our galaxy? How about the universe? How about the very fabric of space and time itself? Yeah. There's one of the emergent hypotheses from quantum physics and relativity is that the expansion of the universe will become so severe that it will rip the very texture of the fabric of space-time itself. And you're worried about a volcano? How, how selfish of you, okay? There's the whole universe you should be worrying about. So um, we were talking about super volcanoes there. By the way, Earth will survive a volcano and an asteroid strike. When people say save uh, the Earth, no, they really mean save humans on Earth and save life on Earth. Earth, the planet, it doesn't care. If, it, if it, Earth gets hit by an asteroid, uh, any asteroid that could hit us today, that's like a gnat flying full speed ahead into the side of an elephant. All right, the elephant is not concerned about this. Um, and about super volcanoes, there are these places such as Yosemite, okay? And there are other places like in India, what are called the Deccan Traps. Um, these are volcanoes that just uh, are spew so much lava onto Earth's surface and so much gas that it severely and catastrophically alters Earth's climate. Now, here's the perennial fight between astrophysicists and paleontologists. We handed you an asteroid 65 million years ago that catastrophically changed the climate. Oh, what happened a year later? All the dinosaurs are dead. Okay, not a year. It took a little while, but they're all dead. Well, the, ge the geologist said, wait a minute. Around then, there was this super volcano in India, which changed the climate. And so they and they spend their life looking down. We spend our lives looking up, and we so so we have multiple ways to get rid of the dinosaurs. <laughs> and maybe the asteroid triggered the the volcanic eruptions from the shot. I, I don't know, or maybe it's just bad luck for the dinosaurs. If one didn't kill them, the other certainly would have, or maybe it required both. But in any case, the um, Yosemite is sort of the next candidate to blow. But there, we don't see, uh, and I'm speaking from a conversation I've had with geophysicists, we don't see other tandem evidence that it's on the brink. When it's on the brink, it starts like when your tummy gets a little gurgly. Mm -hmm. You usually know a little time in advance enough to get to the toilet to throw up, okay? <laughs> there's, just, there's usually a little bit of time there. And so we're measuring, we geophysicists are measuring the rum tummy gurgling of Earth's um, uh, structure, uh, Earth's crust and, and below. And so we so I, we would have some indication that bad things were going to happen. And right now, uh, there isn't. And we have an episode of Star Talk where I interviewed one of these ge uh, geophysicists. She was quite convinced, no, nowhere in our lifetime, we're thousands of years away, at, at worst, from having uh, a catastrophic volcano that will render us extinct. So climate change, when we talk about climate change and how it's an existential threat, that's an existential threat to humans, not to humans, Earth, right? Humans. Oh, Earth. Yeah. First, Earth will be here. Oh, uh, let me make it clear. Yeah. Uh, it's not an existential threat to our species. We will survive climate change as a species. Mm -hmm. It's an existential threat to the 10,000 years of civilization that we have built, mm -hmm. much of which is manifest in our farms in the locations and the functionings of our major cities in the world, nearly all of which are on the water's edge, be it the ocean, be it yeah. the lakes or on rivers. And as you melt the ice in Greenland and in, in Antarctica, the sea levels rise. And you can run the calculation. If we lose those ice sheets, the water level will reach the left elbow of the Statue of Liberty. Oh my God. So you will complete, and it'll happen on a time scale faster than you can just pick up a city and move it. So the existential threat is everything we have built and care about 
that we call civilization is under threat.